Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I'm going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. For now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I think the biggest challenge in our world today is the challenge of, of belief. Because a lot of people don't believe that God is real. And if they do believe in God, they don't believe God. They don't believe, he says. And Jesus is talking to the apostles today, and he said, look, I'm telling you this before it happens so that you may believe. Jesus also said, uh, believe me because I'm telling you the truth. But if that's not enough, believe me because of the things I do. I think one of the greatest things that will help us understand God is reading about the saints, especially the saints that are your age. You think of Carlos Acutis. Here he was, a young man, had a great devotion to the Eucharist, and he built this huge website, became world-renowned. I mean, it was very popular, it was great. I mean, this is someone your age doing this. And then he gets leukemia, I think, some kind of cancer, and dies. And now he's a saint. And the thing was, he was just a normal guy. He loved to play soccer, he loved to do things. It was that person who always treated the other people around him with respect, with compassion, with love. Being a saint doesn't mean that you're a curmudgeon and you're kind of like, mm, you know, no. Nah. It really is akin to that playground, that God places boundaries on there so that we can frolic and have fun. There's nothing that gets me crazy seeing little children like playing and running around and they're just not a care in the world because they have this sense of security and safety. When I grew up, it was clearly more evident and that safety was, was much, much profound. I mean, in the sense, you didn't have to worry about it. I mean, if I would go out work, walking around at night, I wouldn't have to worry about something bad happening. Now, a lot more bad things are happening in the world. There's a lot more hatred in this world and in our midst. And if you look at the statistics, young people have a lot more anxiety. They're a lot sadder. And the reason why that is, I think it's clear. They don't believe God. They don't think that God really has big plans for them, that he's looking out for them, and they think it's up to them to make it all work out. And if we just give ourselves over to God, we can be happy. I mean, Jesus said right in the gospel, he says, look, I'm going to leave you guys, and you should be happy for me. I, I, I find it interesting when you have a little child who's really well catechized, who knows their faith, and they're going to say the funeral of a grandparent that was just a very devout human being, very holy person, just the grandmother that everybody loved, kind and loving and gentle, beautiful, and then she dies. And the child goes to the funeral home, and everybody's just 
sad and mourning and grieving. And the little child says, why is everyone so sad? Don't we believe that she's in heaven now? I mean, there's grief. We can't help but feel anguish and pain when we lose someone we love. I know that. In fact, on May 6th was the anniversary of my mother's death, or uh, my, my mother's death, right? And then, and then May 8th, yesterday, was the anniversary of my father's death. And so mom, she died right before Mother's Day, so the funeral was kind of delayed a couple extra days because it was Mother's Day weekend. But we buried my father and my mother 25 years to the day. My mother died 19 years ago, and my father died 44 years ago. And they were beautiful people that gave me a foundation to love. And I was only 15 when my father died, your age. But I realized, and my sister got really mad at me, okay? Because my father had a heart attack when, when I was only six years old, all right? So he could have died when I was six, but he, he survived and he lived 10 years later. And then he died. And here I was, 15 years old. <laughs> I've always kind of been a little strange, I guess. But I said to my sister, who is like four or five years older than me, I said, well, it's really good for him, but it sucks for us, right? And she got mad at me, saying, oh, you know, how can you say that? But she said, I know you're right. I didn't remember saying that, but my sister reminded me that I had said that when I was like 15 or whatever it was. But the idea is that when we really try and put our place, our, our trust in God, amidst all our confusion, amidst all the questions we have, God will reveal himself to you. He will let you know the truth if you seek it. But what we lack in this world more than anything is humility. We think that we find peace and joy in choice. Well, if this is what I want, this is what's going to make me happy. Not if you choose poorly, okay? If you don't choose that which is true, good, and beautiful, it will lead to anxiety, sadness, even sometimes sickness. But if you choose, God, choose correctly, it's still tough. You have your cross to carry. It's not an easy road. Don't get me wrong. But you will know joy. You will know peace. You will have the capacity to transform those sufferings in your life and give them meaning. And this is what Jesus is trying to say in the gospel today. I'm telling you this before it happens so that you know that it's true. There's over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that point to Jesus' death and resurrection and the coming of his reality. Um, this week, I don't know what would work in the schedule, but if we could maybe take, I don't know if it would work immediately after Mass on Friday instead of the Thursday meetings, just I'll do a, like a 15-minute presentation of the Shroud. I have a little PowerPoint that we could run through that just goes through the forensic evidence. So if we could just, if the eighth graders, if we can work out sometime. If that's not the best time, let me know. Just like 15 minutes is all it, all it takes. And, and it really is something that points to a great sign that I believe God has given us. I think it takes more faith to believe that it's a medieval forgery, <laughs> burial cloth of the first century. There's so much scientific evidence that points to the reality of this. And, and it's, it's just amazing. But here's the reality. If we don't have faith, no proof will ever be sufficient. And if we do have faith, uh, if, if, you know, and if we do have faith, no proof is necessary. Because given this gift to believe. Just like the little children who are so open, like the Eucharist, right? When these children had this beautiful first communion, in fact, it was great. The crowd erupted in applause. They asked the children, what will happen if we pursue perfection? They will achieve excellence. And then why do we do that to glorify God? And I wasn't expecting this, but the whole congregation just erupted in applause. And what, how beautiful that is. It's how you find joy I've been a priest 31 years, and I, I, you know, Bishop can move me whenever he wants. 
But there's one thing I want you guys to remember is that every view is an infinitely valuable, one of a kind masterpiece created by God for mission. And that no matter what happens, no matter where I'm at, I always will try and keep you in my prayers. And if you ever need to look me up, I just will to be easy to find. And I mean that. 5, 10, 15 years from now, something's not going right, look me up. You should be able to find me unless I'm dead. And then if I'm dead, hopefully I make heaven so you can ask for my intercession. I'll pray for you that way. I always tell people, I said, you know, um, my responsibility is help you to walk with God. And, if I, and a good chance I'm going to die before you guys, right? And I mean Catholic, Protestant, doesn't matter. I, I, you know, it's walking with Jesus. That's what matters the most. And if, if, if maybe you're going a little off the path, and I said, you know, God, if you can let me go down there and haunt them to try and scare them to be holy again. <laughs> you know, so. But nonetheless, I love you guys. You guys are great. And just be open to the truth. And the truth is not what I think. It's what is. And when we encounter that truth, it's always accompanied with joy. It really is. I want you all to experience that joy. And I know you want it too, in the depth of your being. You need to say, God, okay, even if you're there, I don't even know if you're there, help me know your joy. And he will not disappoint. I'm convinced of that. If you're open to that, he will not disappoint. May not be today, may not be tomorrow, maybe 10 or 15 years from now. It may be when you take your dying breath. I don't know. But God will never disappoint if you seek the truth and long to love him and love one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now we bring our prayers and intercession before the Lord. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that her guidance will strengthen and renew all on the path of deeper discipleship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders that they will make their decision in light of the truth and justice that embodies God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we conclude our faith formation year in thanksgiving for the dedication of our parents, catechists, and all who assist in religions in religious education of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, that they may not lose heart, but be renewed in faith and trust in the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed on from this life, that they may be granted eternal life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for Amanda Brewer, who the for whom this Mass is offered, we praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in Ukraine, in our world, in our families, and also for all peoples who suffer under tyrannical or incompetent rule. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who made their first communion, those who made, who've been confirmed, that God may give them the joy that comes from pursuing him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn and the glory and praise is 618, all that we have. And the glory and praise number 618. 